Hello and welcome to Hammer and Dice. Today we'll be taking a look at Wizard Zine by Gavin Norman. This is issue number one, the aquatic issue, although I don't think there have been any issues since number one, so this is the only issue of Wizard Zine. But let's take a look. So this issue of Wizard Zine focuses on the ocean and other aquatic environments, but particularly the ocean. It has a statement of theme at the beginning, followed by a Vivamancer NPC, which is one of Gavin Norman's original character classes for OSR games from his product, The Complete Vivamancer. Following this is Tomes of Magic, which gives you a selection of books that you can place into your setting for your players to find, almost all of which contain spells found in Wizard Zine that are to do with the ocean, and all of them give details on bits of lore and characters that you can put in your setting to do with oceans and ocean spellcasting. There are then magic items to do with the ocean, some of which are used by the NPC which can be found earlier in their lair. There are then some monsters which can be used or created by oceanic spellcasters, and then a list of 30 oceanic spells, which is the real meat of this wizard scene. And all of this is supported by some appendices at the end. So if we just turn over and have a look at the proposed theme of the issue, here it tells you how the most commonly found types of magic users can be tied into wizard zine, uh, the ocean issue, how they'll use oceanic magic, what they'll use it for, and why the ocean holds their interest. So here, elementalists, as one of the most dramatic examples of the untempered force of the elements, it is clear that the elemental specialists take an interest in the oceans, harnessing and mimicking its vast power. So that's an example for a typical magic type user. There are then here at the bottom, sea wizards and vivimancers. Sea wizards would just be magic users that use the uh, Appendix 3 here, which gives a suggested spell list for sea wizards. So sea wizards would use their magic to help ships travel across the water, keep a, keep a coastal village or town safe from the elements, or become part of a ship's crew, making sure that it can get where it needs to go just as fast as possible. Think how wizards use their magic in Tales of Earthsea or the Tide Sages from World of Warcraft. And then there's also the Vivamancers here and why they'd be interested in sea life. And then a Vivamancer is used as an example NPC on the following page here. Ephedrine the Serene. She is a 17th level Vivamancer and is neutral evil. This section on her hair is four pages long, giving her backstory, her appearance, how the ma magic of the ocean has changed her appearance, and information on her current research, what she's up to right now, information on her lair on the Isle of Lost Hope with six different locations in it. So you could use that as part of an adventure if your player characters ever came across her or decided perhaps foolishly to invade her lair. And then a list of eight rumors which you could roll on for if a sailor is trying to tell, tell the players some tales of her. So we'll just roll on that now. Four. Ephedrine is, is of noble descent, being the daughter of a princess of great power. She fled her palace abode as a maiden and has had no further dealings with the nobility. So you could use that as an adventure hook. Um, that particular princess has got in contact with the player characters if they've got a bit of a reputation um, to go and see what's happened to her daughter. Or maybe because enough time has passed the royal family doesn't want this connection with her anymore. So is looking for the player characters to get rid of her. So here we then have we then move on to this section here, Tomes of Magic, which lifts 12 magical tomes in this format here. Title, author, language, and then gives you a details of what the book looks like, what information it contains, and then if it contains any spells, what those spells are. So I won't go through them all, but I will roll a d12 now, just to have a look. Uh, six, Feline's Tome of the Seas, author Feline, Sea Mage of the Carathid Fleet, language common, a large elegant book bound with cuttlefish skin whose colours shift with the passing of the day and upon contact. The tome is in pristine condition and bears its title embossed in elaborate gold lettering. Within it is found a general treatise on the sea magic along with the following spells. Control buoyancy, control weather, control winds, dive, ride the waves, water walk. So if a magic user in your game found that, they would have access to a whole number of sea based spells that could aid them in traveling across the water or protecting the base that they're located out of from foul weather and would really open up the world for your players to start them moving into aquatic locations. We then have five magic items here, the Aquarium of Minification, the Brining Vat, the Clam of Wondrous Pearls, the Gill Symbiont and the Solvent of Aquatic Transformation. All of these do weird and quite unusual things and they definitely sit at that weird 
almost body horror-esque end of the OSR spectrum, such as the Aquarium of Minification, is a 10 foot long, 4 foot wide, 4 foot deep glass tank that is a perfect, that through magic is a perfectly uh, regulated aquarium, but if a humanoid character gets put in it, if they fail a save versus spell roll, then they are minified and transformed into a 6 inch tall miniature aquatic version of themselves and live happily in this aquarium none the wiser that they're not meant to be in it. The brining vat allows you to create brine spawn or use it as a long term of preservation for a living creature. The clam of wondrous pearls can be used to just create a very valuable pearl every 12 months or if magically tampered with can create pearls with various magical effects. So I'll just leave the rest to your imagination and won't go through the guild simulant or solvent of aquatic transformation too carefully but uh, you might be able to tell what they could do just through their names. So the monsters detailed here are the Brine Spawn, the Demon of the Deeps, and the Drowned Dead. The Brine Spawn are creatures created out of salt and briny water that are utterly loyal to their creator. They're created using the brining vats detailed before. The Demon of the Deeps is an aquatic demon that can be summoned by one of the brooks in the previous section. And the Drowned Dead is a, an alternative watery take on a zombie. And there are D6 variations here to give some variety to what your players encounter. So as I said, we get to the meat of the issue. There are 30 spells here, so I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just going to pick out some of my favourites. So just starting on this first page here, Call to the Deeps is a summoning spell where if you're in the water you can summon a sea monster to your aid or a horde of intelligent creatures that live in the water such as merfolk they aid you for a set amount of time depending on your level when casting it doing this requires a body part of the creature you've summoned so to summon a more powerful creature you'll have to somehow get hold of a body part of a similar type of creature conjure land is also an awesome spell which allows you to summon an island that has a sort of food water shelter and a safe harbor to pull your boat into although the island is affected by one of 20 different things you could change it from a paradise that you don't want to leave to a to an island covered in the corpses of those who've lived there before so i'll just roll uh one of those up now 12. mutant creatures roam the island simple and pretty straightforward that one ghost ship is a, another great one which summons a crew of ghostly sailors to pilot to your ship. This lasts for eight hours, but you can make a sacrifice of a living person to extend that duration to a full 24 hours, or you can do a deal with the spirits of the dead, and that will then extend the duration of the spirit's servitude, depending on what deal you get. Simple and straightforward one I like here, Island Hop. Just teleports you to an island you can see within your site. Really useful for moving around in archipelagos or in an episodic campaign where each island could have a different adventure location in it. Seasickness, if you cast it, up to 3d6 hit dice of creatures become affected with seasickness. Or in the reverse, you can cast it on people out at sea to stop them being affected by seasickness to give them their sea legs. So a great spell there that really allows a ocean-themed wizard to um, affect the battlefield in a unique way. And the final spell is also one of my favorites, Whale Speech, allows you to speak to whales, but it also allows you to send messages through water to somebody else who is actively in that water. So if you've got some allies, maybe of some merfolk deep down in the water and you need to speak to them, you could use this spell to speak to them from a very long way away, or just you know, have a chat with a whale. So then the appendices, this starts with a list of aquatic monsters you can summon for use with the Summon Monster Spell series. This is for a uh, Labyrinth Lord. I know Gavin Normans has since created the BX Essentials and then Old School Essentials, which is a really great rule set. But he made this early enough that he hadn't created those yet, so this is designed for use with Labyrinth Lord. And then Appendix 2 is a random selection, so if you wanted to roll up one of those terms of magic from before, so it's just, as I said before, there's 12 of them, and then roll on this chart here for one of 30 spells. So if you wanted to generate a spell scroll for one of your players to find, you could just roll on this chart here. And then a sea wizard spell list. So a sea wizard would be somebody who uses their magic to live in and around the sea, traveling with boats to ensure their protection, spending time in port towns, making sure that they're safe from bad weather, things like that, as well as the usual facing off against any sea-based threats. So that's Wizard Zine. I think this does a very, very good job of giving you all the tools 
that you need to run some ocean based adventures to incorporate sea wizards into your game adds a whole bunch of spells that can be found in the domains of magic users that would reside along the coast uh, even deep far underwater perhaps as well as a uh, very powerful NPC that could be dropped into your game especially if you've got the um, complete Vivermancer rules as a power player in your setting having her own goals and desires or just maintaining her domain and being a very powerful figure that the uh, players might want to avoid so really really like this and being created by Gavin Norman Wizard Zine number one The Aquatic Issue Thank you for watching.